to sh show the hundreds of new things that we've gotten in that I'm so excited about. I can't stand it. I'm Steve Craddy. Welcome to Plant City Bonsai. This is a most exciting video that we're about to pr present to you. And uh, it includes many, many months since our last video. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, all the new products that we have. We'll be going to uh, the Japanese garden room that's full of, that is uh, full of new trees. The, uh, what we term the rectangle area has so many specimens in it, it's unreal. And uh, we, will be just, we will be showing off a tree that I just acquired from New York. It's the oldest white pine I've ever seen. From, it's a it's Japanese white pine. And uh, it has a, kind of a cool history. So we'll be looking at that also. And uh, so uh, I'd say let's get with it. We will first start with the shaded specimen room. I can't wait to get there, so let's, let's head over there. These trees are special in many ways. We have not put them on, our, on any video in the past, although these trees I know by first names. I've been maintaining them for a client for uh, 10 years now, and they're super special. Uh, the, the, like this, is a, this particular one is a trident maple. It's imported. It's root over rock, over the best stone possible, called Ibagawa. And uh, it just, it, it, it shows root over rock to the maximum. The next two trees are Chinese elms. They're both imported. And uh, when, when, I, when I first sold them, they were probably uh, half the size they are now. But they were in an area where they were able to grow nine months out of the year, and with the incredible fertilizing uh, system that we had set up, they have jumped. This is just a beautiful, gorgeous tree with you know everything you want in bonsai, with, uh, starting with the nabari, beautiful branch placement, uh, awesome taper. It's just, it's, it's, it's a perfect design. This is the other magnificent specimen, Chinese elm specimen. Uh, this is this is a tree that that uh, uh, it again it's like the one we we just talked about it's extremely old uh, extremely happy uh, elms are like many trees they do very well with a semi cascade full cascades they weaken so uh, we did this from a little different way therefore it, it's going to be around for forever. So, uh, just very well ramified. The nabari is killer. It has that exposed root look. And uh, it's been a joy. And I, this is another one I've been working on for a decade now. The next two trees I w would like to talk about, they started their first many years growing as a uh, tropical bonsai here in, in the North Georgia. And, uh, they, they were a little bit girthy, but uh, they were probably probably one fourth the size they are now when I sold them to a new customer down in Sea Island, Georgia. And due to the incredible humidity, uh, wonderful things happened. A, they grew like crazy, and B, aerial rootage is what we always want on these. They just went crazy developing mature looking uh, aerial rootage. And what's so popular about these two, uh, my enjoyment working on them for, for many years, but what everyone loves about these is they're not the, the contrived or, or done so, so, many, so much the S-curve ficus tree. This is totally its own animal, and uh, they're just both incredible. This one has very similar attributes. A uh, little slimmer line pot. Uh, this one has more of a, uh, a, a alignment of uh, aerial roots going from end to end of the pot. Again, it's just, it's just awesome. I 
think the, the one thing you appreciate in bonsai is the amount of time that it takes to reach a goal. Uh, this clump style tree, tried at Maple, was done by Richard Cantrell. And uh, uh, I, I wasn't around when he built this, but it's amazing how these guys know how to uh, put several trees, bundle them together, they fuse, and they form beautiful art pieces on their own. And uh, glad, to, glad to have it here for a while, because Richard was uh, one of my main teachers and friends. And uh, so uh, it's good to have it for a while. I'm sure it'll have a new home. In the year before COVID, uh, I became very concerned about uh, having so few ball cypress, pond cypress, and because we, uh, we had actually uh, extra good sales on the ones that I'd had previously, and uh, uh, we weren't able to fill in on them. And uh, I have done so since then. And it's one of my favorite plants to use, trees to use. And here's a, an excellent example of a very old ball cypress. Uh, done by a uh, cypress professional can't remember the name offhand but uh he's famous for doing ball cypress throughout the country kingsville boxwood it's been my signature tree almost since i first started in fact it goes back into the 70s my second my second bonsai or series of bonsai trees were kingsville boxwoods that's early 70s so it's been a passion of mine ever since. We have a great selection of Kingswells this season, uh, pre-bonsai as well as, as finished ones. Some of them can tell you a story. They're, they're that old. So, uh, uh, but it's just, uh, this one here has a, has a char characteristic you see ra rarely. It has an exposed root style, which is just super rare. I've been monitoring this one would not sell it to people for a good length of time, but I'm, I'm satisfied that, that the health is, is where we want it to be, so it is actually available now. Uh, uh, these guys here, could, all these could tell you a story. They're at least 30 years old, up to 60 years each, each tree. The favorite size of Kingsville that we sell is also our more affordable one. It's a, it buys you a tree you know, at least over 12 years old. And uh, they had that same tree character, but in a very miniature version. Uh, I think that most people are super pleased when they choose from these. And uh, uh, I, I, a lot of the time, get to be the one to pot them, or people take them and, and pot them at their own workbench at home. But uh, it's fantastic. Well, we just, we just discussed the, the Kingsville Boxwood offerings for this season. Got one more group of them, I'd be glad to show you right now. It ain't gonna rain, guys, we're fine. I think we're good. This is a very majestic group of Kingsville boxwoods that I've, I've known about for, for forever. Uh, they are from the monastery. The monastery closed its uh, bonsai business, and I was invited to purchase uh, uh, so their trees, many of their trees, and uh, I, uh, I'm just very excited to have this group. Uh, these, these were actually planted in the ground, so it was kind of a, it was a, it was a tough acquisition. We had to, to have hand dig them uh, very, very carefully, and they've been there so many years. A lot of these, Kingsville's are notorious for reverting back to a little bit different foliage. I mean, they're still tiny leaves, but they, that, that happens. And many of these have reverted back to a little bit more elongated leaf. The tree drama is there. So I'm just, I'm psyched about having these. I guess you could say we saved our best to last. It did, we did start a, a pretty heavy rain storm here. So we moved into the glass house, so it's a little bit difficult to uh, have the sound, same sound quality. But we have to show off, show you our beautiful new white pine. 
It's one of my, mo my most recent acquisitions. It's a fabulous, nearing 100-year-old uh, Japanese white pine grafted on black. I just love to see trees like this that have that huge flaky bark. It's very, very old. One of my customers named Roy Gerber out in New York purchased this from an importer almost 50 years ago. So and he's, it's been his, you'd say, his life's work. And uh, anyway, I, he offered the tree to me, and so we purchased it, and I'm most excited about it. Uh, you don't see trees like this hardly ever. It's super old. It has textbook bark, black pine bark, and then the cyan uh, white pine is just unbelievable. It's just a fabulous feat accomplished by a very wonderful bonsai artist.